Mitsurugi was a samurai who lived during Japan's Civil War period. Apprehensive of the increasing use of firearms, he traveled far and wide in search of the powerful weapon Soul Edge, but his efforts proved fruitless. Disappointed, Mitsurugi returned to his domain. To vent his frustrations, he entered a tournament against Tanegashima Firearms. However, this too ended in defeat. What else could a self-made man like Mitsurugi do but face the changing times head on? Taki, known as the Dark Hunter, is a ninja and demon huntress. Her quest to find Soul Edge ended in a confrontation with Cervantes, the greatest foe she had yet faced. After a deadly battle, Taki emerged victorious, but not before her beloved sword Rekimaru was shattered. She returned Sofitia, the young girl she saved in battle, to her homeland, and then Taki, too, made her way back home to Japan. Foremost in her mind was the mending of her sword, which she intended to do using a shard of Soul Edge. Alas, the two swords were incompatible, and she had no choice but to give up. However, there was another sword she could try. The enchanted blade she hid before leaving Japan, Mekimaru. There was once a martial arts temple known as Ling Sheng Su. Though the temple had a long and prosperous history, it would take only one night for it to be reduced to ruins. The sole survivor was a man named Killick. Training under the old man known as Edgemaster, he worked hard learning secret techniques for resisting the cursed sword Soul Edge in preparation for one final battle. Maxi is a Nunchaku wielder who hails from the Ryukyu kingdom. Unlike his father, a merchant bound to his kingdom, Maxi refused to be shackled to anything, and so chose the path of piracy. With his eyes on the wider world and a trusty crew in tow, he set sail, drifting from adventure to adventure as he saw fit. Now, bound for India, Maxi's ship headed towards Southeast Asia. Zhanghua was born during the Ming Dynasty into the noble Chai House, a family of warriors. Fatherless, she was raised well by her kind and protective mother. In time, she learned to use her mother's Chinese sword to practice ancient techniques. Though her mother passed away at a young age, Zhanghua continued to devote herself to the sword and in time, became proficient enough to do her family's name proud. Her life, however, was on the verge of taking a sharp turn. The Aval organization is something of a legend. Long ago, the king of a knightly order took up the spirit sword to confront the wielder of the cursed sword. Lurking in history's shadows, the secret society has persisted through the ages. Their mission has been to find the lost spirit sword and bestow it upon their future king while preventing those that they called outsiders from wreaking havoc upon the world. Gro, a young man blessed with a cool head and magnificent fighting skills, became leader of the organization's punitive force. They sent him on a mission to hunt down and kill the Reeker of Chaos, the Azure Knight. However, his entire force was destroyed and he was dealt a nearly mortal wound. Interim report on the Aswell surveillance mission. The subject was born into a family of doctors who conducted research on plagues. As well as modern medicine, he pursues knowledge in numerous other fields, including history, martial arts, fine arts, literature, and human culture. His broad knowledge and intellectual pursuits gained him entry into the organization. He contributes greatly to our group, including his research on ecological theory and artifacts, particularly those who've lost their humanity. In recognition of his deeds, he was rewarded with a seat among the Twelve. 
the organization's supreme decision-making body. Currently, the subject is assigned to our branch in Northern Europe, researching the evil seed phenomenon, which occurred yesterday. This ends the report. The following document contains an interaction with the subject. Though born to the noble house of Valentine, the young lady knew not only good fortune, but also despair. Her father delved into alchemy in search of the key to eternal youth, Soul Edge, but found only madness and death. As a result, their house met with ruin. Her mother, before being consumed by a terrible illness, revealed to her they were not related by blood. Even so, the young lady's love for her parents was unfaltering. Following in the footsteps of her father, she devoted her life to alchemy and eventually found herself faced with the truth about Soul Edge. Cervantes de Leon was a pirate captain who struck fear in the hearts of all who sailed the Atlantic. The moment he laid hands on Soul Edge, its overwhelming power transformed him into a terrible fiend. However, two great powers opposed him, the holy warrior Sofitia, blessed by the gods, and Taki, a demon-hunting ninja. Together they defeated Cervantes, destroying part of the sword in the process. Consumed in Hellfire, Cervantes' body was reduced to ash. Though it appeared his ambitions had thus come to an end, it was not to be. I grew up in the Song Dojang run by my father. Three years ago, I went on a quest for Soul Edge, known as the Sword of Salvation, to protect my land. My quest went pretty well for a time, but then Huang brought me home. I guess it was wrong of me to run off without telling my father and all. He said I must redo all my training, and forced me back into the rigid life I tried to escape. But the truth is, that was the least of my problems. The malevolent cult Fiegel Sestimus, or the Guardians of Truth, worshippers of Palkea, the God of Destruction. In preparation for the day when all will be cleansed, the group performed horrific ceremonies and experiments in underground shrines across the globe. In 1583, which the group calls the Year of Saturn's Crimson Serpent, they were able to make contact for the first time with Palkea the Executioner. Deliver the Sword of Judgment, Soul Edge, to my altar. Only then can the purification begin. Upon hearing this revelation, High Priest Kumpetku devoted himself to the nefarious forbidden arts in order to create a golem of fearsome power. Now, Astaroth, a warrior forged by human hands for the sake of claiming Soul Edge, is nearing his awakening. Azure Knight appeared in Europe out of nowhere. Bound to no state, his endless indiscriminate slaughter earned him the title Nightmare. Every night, Nightmare appeared, committing acts so heinous he soon became a symbol of fear. Still, despite rumors about him spreading like wildfire, his true identity remained a mystery. The Azure Knight, previously known as Nightmare, the former wielder of Soul Edge who brought the world to its knees. In truth, he was first a knight named Siegfried. After killing his father by accident, Siegfried fell into a deep denial, which eventually twisted into a desire for revenge against his father's imaginary killer. To enact his revenge, he needed power, which led him to Soul Edge. Turned into the sword's puppet, he became Nightmare, until losing in battle to Killick, 
When the sword was shattered, Siegfried found himself awoken from the strange spell he had been under. Though freed from Soul Edge's grasp, he now had to face the fact that it was he who had killed his father. On the ground to his side lay the shattered remnants of Soul Edge. Sophitia was a baker's daughter chosen by the gods to become a holy warrior. Given the order to destroy Soul Edge, she set out on a quest that would eventually lead her to the sword's wielder, Cervantes. In a fearsome battle, she was able to destroy one of the swords. Though successful in her quest, shards of the cursed sword pierced her body, causing severe injuries. Her life was saved by the ninja, Taki, whereupon she returned to her homeland to recuperate. The days passed peacefully until one day. Ask any adventurer and they'll know of Verci, a wealthy merchant from South Italy, and his underground treasury, the Money Pit. After getting rich in the weapons trade and earning the title of Merchant of Death, Verci set sail with his fleet to find the legendary Soul Edge. But during his quest, Verci learned his entire fortune had been lost in the chaos of a war that broke out in Italy. Half crazed, Verci hid what little he had left in the impenetrable money pit located on a small island in the Mediterranean. There he stationed a grotesque guardian who silently and mercilessly disposed of all who entered, quickly becoming the fear of all looters. In recent years, however, a new rumor began to spread among some adventurers. Historic rainfall had caused flooding in the money pit, destroying most of its traps. The Guardian had also vanished, leaving the treasure free for the taking. The Manchi clan, a group of Japanese ninjas known for their unusual powers, maintained neutrality even as their country was embroiled in civil war. Fearing their strength and their defiance, the nation's chief warlord ordered every man, woman, and child be killed. However, one survived, Yoshimitsu, next in line to succeed the chief and a master swordsman. He single-handedly took on the warlord's army, dealing them a hard blow, but they eventually overwhelmed him, severing his right arm. Despite the countless pursuers sent after Yoshimitsu, he vanished without a trace. That is until one day, an agent for the warlord received word that Yoshimitsu had been sighted. Raphael, the cold, cruel head of the Sorel family, is known for his fencing prowess and deep knowledge of medical science. Though still young, he has survived numerous plots and venomous political strife to establish his family as part of the ruling elite. However, when the evil seed occurred, a noble that he had backed went violently insane and attempted to kill the king. Seeing this as the perfect opportunity to strike, Raphael's political enemies blamed him for the incident and attacked his Paris home. Betrayed one by one by those around him, Raphael fled to his birthplace, Rowan, in order to mount a counterattack. Though he arrived safely after shaking off his pursuers, he did not get the welcome he had hoped for. In a remote corner of lands to the east, there is a village of wind worshippers who live in harmony with nature. Talon was born into a family of shamans and raised as the last priestess of the winds amid the encroaching western civilization that threatened their way of life. Due to her great sensitivity to the spirit world, 
Talon was heavily affected by the evil seed and nearly died. As time passed, Westerners began to visit her village, and one happened to bring with him a certain metal shard. The elders who saw this vitality charm instantly realized it was dangerous, for it was a shard of the cursed sword, Soul Edge. Across all history, the truly strong remain shrouded deep in darkness, hidden from society. They carefully erase all traces of their existence so that when later generations look back on history, it is as if they were never there. But sometimes, even the most perfect plans to erase one's tracks leave unexpected loose ends. This tome was one of those loose ends, left behind in charred ruins what secrets lie within? Witchers are known as warriors with unusual powers, the slayers of monsters and fiends, and eliminators of other forms of devilry. One day, the elite witcher Geralt took on another contract, his task to subdue a sorceress. The now-aged woman, though ever strange, had been greatly respected, yet in recent years, rumors had spread that she was dabbling in the dark arts. She had achieved prominence as a researcher of planes, but if she were to call forth a demon from another dimension, it could have grave consequences. Accordingly, she was a threat to be assessed and, if found guilty of iniquity, a threat to be contained. In search of the truth and prepared to mete out punishment as necessary, Geralt made his way to the ruins of a citadel standing amidst marshlands. <laughs> 